says this, I really love my life. Everything about it, it is all so special to me, being alive. But I had my tough moments for sure. My mom had Alzheimer's, and she was in a nursing home, and she was dying slowly. I gave everything I had to taking care of her, but it was really rough caring for people with that disease. I had some really rough moments when I was going through that with her, believe me. She was a really feisty woman. She would remember me when I visited, but she would get angry when I was there, and she would try to leave, and it was so sad. It can be very hard on you seeing your mother losing her mental faculties. She died three years ago at the age of 90. I discovered while on that journey with my mom that I had to learn how to take care of myself first. Not in a selfish way, but if you are caring for someone else and you don't take care of yourself, you will burn out. So seven years ago I discovered yoga, and I have been practicing it every day since. That and a friend of mine told me that when I was going through stuff with my mom, pray about everything and worry about nothing. That has meant so much to me. And I try to live that every day. I even had it painted on my wall behind my bed, complete with 3D butterflies around it. That is how I see life now, and that has made all the difference, which is why I can honestly say I really love my life. Let's go. 
discovered while on that journey with my mom. Ooh, that I had to learn how to take care of myself first. Not in a selfish way, but if you are caring for somebody else, and you don't take care of yourself, you will burn out. So seven years ago, I discovered yoga, and I have been practicing it every day, ever since. That and a friend of mine told me when I was going through that storm with my mom, pray about everything and worry about nothing. That has meant so. Some of my brothers and sisters had disabilities, and one of them had autism. I grew up with 12 siblings. My parents always had a love for children. They were total saints. It definitely was countercultural. Our culture in America is so individualistic, but I was raised with a real sense of community. Everyone pulling their own way to help the family as a whole. That's why I do what I do. I want to help others. Not only was I adopted, but my parents always had foster kids too. Besides my siblings, my house had over 100 foster kids come through it while I was growing up. I was raised with kids from Africa, kids from Mexico, kids from India, from so many different countries, ethnicities, and races. Thanksgiving at our table was like the meeting of the United Nations. I would be lying if I said I didn't see color. Of course I did. Everyone does. But I also learned the meaning of love, the meaning of love. And what this world needs today more than anything else is love for one another. I teach autistic students. I got into it because I was adopted as a child. And some of my brothers and sisters had disabilities. And one of them had autism. I grew up with 12 siblings. My parents always had a love for children. They were total saints. It definitely was countercultural. Our culture in America is so individualistic. But I was raised with a real sense of community, everyone pulling their own weight to help the family as a whole. That's why I do what I do. I want to help others. Not only was I adopted, but my parents always had foster kids too. Besides my siblings, my house had over 100 foster kids come through it while I was growing up. I was raised with kids from Africa, kids from Mexico, kids from India, from so many different countries, ethnicities, and races. Thanksgiving at a 
a table was like the meeting of the United Nations. I would be lying if I said I didn't see color. Of course I did. Everyone does. But I also learned that meaning of love. And what this world needs today more than anything else is love for one another. That's why I do what I do. And I've realized that I've forgotten about myself. For example, when I was going through my divorce, people advised me to give up my apartment and to leave the life I had with my dog and make other arrangements. At that time, I made some changes. I flew home to Columbia to take care of some stuff and returned heartbroken because I left my dog with my family back in Columbia. Back here, I eventually moved out of my apartment to live with my sister. But I missed that part of me, that part of my life, my own space, and those puppy eyes looking at me every day when I got home. I get home from work. At this point in my life, though, I'm grateful for all my experiences, the good and the bad, and the advice from people who care about me. It all has made me wiser and stronger. I'm more certain now that every single step I'm about to take in life, that I'm taking in life, is because I know it is what I want to do, and it sets me free. This is an as we part. So.
I'm so actually using it myself. I started using once a month doing doing it, then once a week, then three times a week, until finally every day I would use. I developed a bad addiction to heroin. I hit rock bottom when I lost all of my healthy relationships. Nobody wanted to let me live at their house. I was homeless. I couldn't keep a job. I had nowhere to turn. I decided I needed to get help before I died or wound up in jail. <laughs> my aunt was willing to help me. So I called her for help, and she took me to detox. I had a social worker working with me at the detox, and after going to the AA and NA meetings there, I realized I needed help long term. My social worker gave me two lists for rehabs, and I went down the list, calling every single one of them. Every single one was full, except for the very last one, Jersey Shore Rescue Mission. When I called them, there was no answer. I was like, all right, that's it. I give up. I got so discouraged. I went to an NA meeting later on that day where my social worker showed up and said to me, Jersey Shore Rescue Mission is on the phone for you. I got on the phone and they told me they had one bed available. I joined them the very next day. I joined the rehabilitation program at Market Street Mission, an affiliate of Jersey Shore Rescue Mission, in October of last year. I learned structure there. I had to learn to live without a dependency on drugs, and they helped me to do that. It was a really great program. I graduated from the program on July 31st. I decided I wanted to join their internship program, and I've been interning here ever since. I joined because I want to give back and help others. And this was the third installment of a four-part series I did on my uh, time at the Jersey Shore Rescue Mission. So, thank you everyone. This is uh, Michelle for one last piece. At the very end, there's a section that I need your help with. So I'm going to ask you to join with me at the end.
my aunt was willing to help me, so I called her for help, and she took me to detox. I had a social worker working with me at the detox, and after going to the AA and the NA meetings there, I realized I needed long-term help. My social worker gave me two lists for rehabs, and I went down the list calling every single one. Every single one was full. Except the very last one, Jersey Shore Rescue Mission. But when I called them, there was no answer. I was like, all right, that's it. I give up. I got so discouraged. I went to an NA meeting later on that day where my social worker showed up and said, Jersey Shore Rescue Mission is on the phone for you. Thank <laughs> you. 